maybe we're jumping the gun on it a little bit and we've got more on the on our plate right now than we can possibly accomplish in that one workshop i know that and i don't you know and i'm just saying let's do it right and and i'd rather have us get our own act together and and express our views and i would to be worrying about everybody else they'll get there mr dixon um, I, um, um, I've got a little different view than Mr. Foreman. I, I um, think I can support this, and I've thought about this all weekend long, and the reason I think I can support this is, is because um, we are going to have a lot of people here, a lot of people. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people that come to these meetings that may not want to speak, but they want to hear what's being said. And, um, you know, since the fact that we're going to have so many people that I feel like at this meeting that, you know, some of the people that aren't going to speak may just choose to stay home and be able to watch it from home. And so um, I think because of a space issue and the fact that we may have to try to find chairs for people to sit in and everything else that I think that that it's, um, you know, for this particular thing and I, I don't want to do it for every workshop that we have, but because this is such a big issue that I'm going to support this tonight and, and, and hopefully, um, you know, we won't have to deal with this on every workshop that we have. And this is a big thing. And, and um, as I said, I think it may cut down and I'm not trying to keep people from coming to these meetings. All I'm trying to say is that we're going to have enough people here anyway. So, um, you know, the ones that may come just to listen, um, may stay home and make it to where people that want to speak or whatever may be or be here and, um, um, and be able to listen to it and get the same thing out of it everybody else is getting out of it. So I will be supporting it tonight. Mr. Braden. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, will support it as well. There's a lot of people I believe are on vacation and out of town. There's some people who just can't make it to these meetings and, and want to stay abreast and, um, and see what's going on. Um, and I think we just need to stay as transparent as possible. Um, so I'll support it. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Morgan. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, because of the public interest and for the sake of transparency, I do support this. Mr. Marler. Y'all are swaying me. <laughs> like, cause, I mean, I understand there's going to be a lot of people here. I just think that, you know, you're going to have some people who are still going to complain that their voice wasn't heard. And I just want to make sure that this time around, anybody that says their voice wasn't heard had equal opportunity to come here and have their voice heard. But I'll, I'll support it if that's what we got to do. Seeing no further discussion, we have a motion and a second to do it. I don't think we, I don't have, think we have a motion. motion. Oh, we don't have a motion. But I will make the motion to live stream uh, the June 9th or the workshop on Thursday. Second. I have a motion, second, and uh, would I presume uh, as Part of that motion will just stay at the dais so the, we don't have to reconstruct the room for the... I will add that to my motion. I okay. think we also have to decide where the money's coming from. Is, am I not correct? I thought, I thought Mr. No, Destin we'll, volunteered to pay that. We'll, uh, we'll, yeah. find, we'll <laughs> find the $200, sir. I believe we can find the money. I'm going to call for the vote. Vote is uh, one one no, uh, six yeses, and I believe. Can I call an end to this meeting? Uh, yeah, almost. Comments sir, from the audience, sir. Is there the anybody mayor? left out there? Excuse me, Mayor. Excuse me, Mayor. Yes. Mayor. Mayor. Hi. Um, under City Manager comments, I also had an announcement to make. Go. Let's um, go ahead. I, I just wanted to, to let uh, all the council members know that there will be uh, ethics training available at the Fort Walton Beach Recreation Center on Tuesday, June 21st from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Uh, the ethics training is mandatory for all elected officials. Um, also, myself and the city attorney uh, Mr. Miller will be attending this, and I would encourage um, any council member who hasn't met their requirements to attend this one. 
it's free, it's close by, um, you have until December to meet the ethics training requirement. So if you don't take it this time around, then you may have to wind up traveling to Tallahassee at uh, added expense that we do not have budgeted. So um, again, it's uh, June uh, 21st, uh, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Fort Walton Beach Recreation Center, and Ray can assist you with registration for that event. And there was a second announcement, Ray? CRA board uh, on 5.30 on November, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> on June 20th. June, June 20th. Preceding the uh, regular council meeting on June 20th. Will be a uh, meeting of the CRA board. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, the uh, Harbor Ad Advisory uh, Committee has some uh, motion or um, uh, recommendations to the CRA board that uh, staff will bring up. Okay, thank you, Ray. And, th and that's the end to city manager comments. Thank you. I apologize for not welcoming you at the start of the meeting, but now that you've survived till 10.30 tonight, uh, job well done. I don't know. Lee, Lee. First, first meeting. Lee's going to be real short and quick, I'm sure. She's cold, that's why. Turn the temperature down. Y'all have completely worn me out. So, so I will be brief. I want to commend you for your decision on the uh, rezoning of the Bay Estate slot earlier. And I just wanted to say quickly two things about that. Um, I think as a city and, and as a body um, and the community feedback is that there are two, um, two initiatives in Destin that apply to this. One is, is not allowing increases in density, if anything, decreasing the allowed density in Destin because of all the issues that we're, that we're having. And then second is preserving heritage trees, which came up on another item tonight. So when you subdivide lots and you build more houses in an area where there would have been fewer, you're obviously most, very most likely going to have to cut down more trees. So, and, and I know this was just one lot, a half of a lot that was gonna be divided into a few, but as we ta you talked about earlier, that can add up. So, so I really think you should be commended and, um, and you will get more requests for these kinds of things probably. So I, I just ask you to keep that in mind. And the, the other thing I wanted to mention that's related is the tree issue. And I would encourage you guys to, um, to, I don't know how you have to do it, direct staff or whatever, to get on this heritage tree preservation issue and not let it sort of get absorbed into the comp plan and land development code changes because that could take a while. And every tree that we lose matters. And so I think that it, our, speaking for Howard Group, our, our feeling is that that should be addressed separately and immediately. Um, and that, and it's, it's something that you don't have to spend money to do. Just make the ordinances that exist within the Land Development Code or create a new ordinance that is stronger. It requires much heavier fees for people who do remove trees uh, illegally. Um, I, my understanding is right now they're very low and it's not even punitive really. So, I, I mean, we're talking thousands of dollars if you cut down trees in some areas that are really serious about preserving their heritage trees. So that's our recommendation. I would not re recommend letting that get absorbed into this overall process you're about to go through. As soon as you can, please jump on it. Thank you. Thank you. Come to the microphone, please. Um, one of the issues I think that you may not be aware of with these wedding houses is that Destin doesn't have the kind of um, noise um, cutoff time as Walton County. And I found that out when I started to plan my daughter's wedding that at 945, the music stops. In Crystal Beach, it's two and three o'clock in the morning and the music's still going on. And if you call for backup, you're told Destin doesn't have a noise curfew or whatever. And so this is a huge problem for uh, the people that live around these houses. And there is a local man that has been walking the beaches and videotaping the condition our beaches are being left in. And it's been on social media. And I think it would be smart for that those videos to be shown because 
our beaches are being left a mess. There's food, there's uh, diapers, there's towels, there's broken furniture. We have a different clientele of people that are coming to Destin now. And it's, it's really upsetting to me tonight to hear the Sheriff's Department say, we don't want to upset the, uh, the tourists. We live here. We, we work hard for this community to make it what it is. It's schools, um, everything about it, the dog park. It's us residents who have done that. And so to put the tourists ahead of us is very hard for me to understand and that to come from the Sheriff's Department. I feel like we're not getting the support. And I think it's, it's really an unfortunate situation. Thank you very much for your time. I I'm not too sure where that comes from. The city of Destin does have a noise ordinance and I believe the proper implementation of that is to call the sheriff's department and they're supposed to call code enforcement. It, it continues. But I, I understand your frustration. I've been there. We've actually, many of the residents on Shire have called the police department and they will not come out. Joey will come out if he's available, but the police department has told us they will not enforce that. So I'm not quite sure where the breakdown is. I know Joey will if he's around, but there have been parties on Woodward in both of those nine bedroom sleep 36 people houses that have two and three o'clock in the morning and if you call Ocean Reef, they cuss you out. So. I, I realize it's very soft, but I've had some success in getting it enforced. It's also a public nuisance. You might try that next time you call the sheriff's department. But Thank you, any other comments? Yeah, hello, uh, Mark Brown, uh, 85 Dolphin Street. Um, I would just like to second what Patty and the uh, other gentlemen said. I uh, live in Crystal Beach myself over on the uh, easterly side uh, from where they live. And I have two of those uh, McMansions being built uh, right down the road on uh, flats or lots 79 and 80 of Dolphin Street. Uh, I can tell you that uh, those homes while they purport to be single family homes or anything but, you know, they house up to 40 people uh, and they have four parking lots. It's the same thing you saw in the pictures that uh, Councilwoman or Dr. Uh, Ramsell brought up earlier. Uh, you know, I've come and gone uh, being a member with seven special forces group uh, from Destin since we BRAC moved down here in 2011. And I can tell you that uh, seeing the direction that Destin is taking is highly concerning to me, especially uh, from someone who was previously stationed at Fort Rucker. I used to come down here in the uh, late 90s prior uh, to the war kicking off. And then ever since then, uh, I've been on all the uh, other good vacation spots that uh, this country has been involved in since. So unfortunately, I, I've worked diligently over a 22 year career to come and call Destin home. Um, I see things changing uh, for the better, uh, but what concerns me is about those uh, large uh, establishments which are very much commercial and not uh, single family whatsoever, is that on Dolphin Street, Street the uh, traffic has always been a very endemic problem, which is really my uh, second point is why I'm concerned so much about the large structures because it sequalities directly into the uh, traffic issue, making it overly concerning because I have two young children. Um, for over a year and a half and now, I've engaged the city council about the traffic on Dolphin Street and uh, even engaged uh, your predecessor, uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor Ponder, about the problem. Uh, I've also had meetings with uh, Mr. Minchell, Steve Minchell, uh, regarding the issue, and I believe my wife has reached out to uh, Dr. Ramswell as well. Um, 
So either way, I'd like to try and get both those things resolved uh, this Thursday. I know it's a workshop, but, uh, you know, ongoing uh, moratorium with respect to uh, these very much commercial dwellings and then some sort of, uh, I like the idea of towing in the neighborhood, all for it, and then uh, tertiary point would be the, uh, the traffic issue on that road. I mean, it's not safe for the kids. So thank you for the time. I appreciate everything you all did. I have to repeat my name, right? Shara Vore, 4564 Willing Drive. I think if you pull the mic down, it's a little <laughs> easier. Thank you. Okay. Shara Vore, 4564 Wilburn Drive. I just wanted to come up after him because I live up by Dolphin Street also. And I just want to tell you guys, it's a really curvy road, which makes it dangerous. It's, it's like a cut through. It's called Regatta Bay South across from Regatta Bay. And then it changes its name to Dolphin Street to go down to the beach. But it's not just a straight road. I mean, it's very curvy so that people can't even see sometimes, you know, when somebody's going to be coming around a curve where they pull out of a side street. So I'm just saying, with, with the more people that are going to come from these bigger houses, you're going to have a lot more people coming around those curves, which is dangerous. That's it. Thank you. Anyone else? Are we done? Yes. We're adjourned.